the all-star app the number one app in the business ufc bellator one championship pfl and more get the app right now link in description all right man let's jump right into it man i was uh i was watching uh the interview that you did with sky sport and you talked about a time when you're dancing with uh getting a real job you know and not not fully committing to fighting and and there was a job like you you dance with with uh door-to-door -door salesman you know take us through a <laughs> take us through approaching a house and selling something i want to, i want to go back to that time um uh, no nah, well, it's not too much of a story i quit on like the first door it's not like i <laughs> it's not it's not really like i did it for a day or did it for a week i was just man the first guy the first guy was rude and i was like man i'm going i'm going back to older than it would have been like 19, 19 or like 20. And there was no real, there's no real path from like anywhere, anyone from this side of the world to make a living off a, off a of fighting. So I guess, yeah, I guess to, to go all, all in on fighting at that stage, um, just didn't make much sense. Right. Mm -hmm. When, when everyone starts asking you like, Oh, so there's an industry for this. And you're like, well, there's no one making money at the moment, but I might, be the first one you know mm -hmm. it's not it's probably not the best sell to, to all your all your friends and family but worked out in the end oh yeah definitely it worked out tremendously um i i have a similar story of doing door-to-door -to -door sales as well when i was 18 i did it for like i think a couple weeks right but it's pretty nerve-wracking man walking up to a house where you don't know who the hell is inside and selling the, and they don't know you're coming and and you're selling something to them and it could be a fucking scam it could be anything right was there any nerves did you do you remember that oh i was with, like because the reason why i did it was um like my best mate bevan was making cash like he was making <laughs> he was making he was making heaps of money i can't remember like we were only been yeah 19 20 years old and he was he was raking in the dough with it you know what i mean like he was he was pulling like quite a lot of cash like 10 15 grand off of knocking on people's doors so i was like well you know if he shows me the ropes i can kind of figure it out and like it was kind of funny because he he, he like like he knocks on the door like he like kind of introduced himself and the guy was like a bit rude and i was just like <laughs> He looked at me and he was just like, "Oh, Dan's not gonna do this for very long." It's just because <laughs> he knew, like, you know, it takes. But at the at the end of the day, I guess, um, like, you just develop thick skin doing it. Like, and and I guess, like, over time, like fighting mixed martial arts and that, you you need thick skin as well. You need thick skin to kind of block out uh, a lot of a lot of the background noise. Yeah, definitely. You know, before owning a gym and, and, you know, outside of training people, were there any other jobs that you did? Uh, yeah, so I was, um, I was landscaping when I first, um, I was landscaping when I first started training and then, yeah. And then I realized, uh, signing up to, to like studying at university is a lot. Like I always knew that I was going to fight spend all of my time fighting but it's like obviously you have to justify it to the point until you get there you know what i mean um so i was like landscaping and then i i you know studied business at university and stuff um but that was like more just because i realized that like eight hours on a shovel and uh and a wheelbarrow is a lot harder on your body than um, like studying and, and reading a couple of books like that. <laughs> it's a lot, it's just a lot easier on your body. You know what I mean? And, and, and when people ask, Oh, what are you doing? You just say, Oh, I'm studying business. And they, they, they're, they're happy. They're content. They leave you alone. Um, but yeah, to try and say, nah, nah, I'm going to um, be the first MMA fighter in the country to make a living. Like that's, um, it's a bit harder for people to kind of grasp. Yeah, it is. It is uh, a lot harder for people to understand when they don't have any background in, in combat. And what, like during that time, right? Like your parents, what were they saying to you? Because I could only imagine, like, like you said, there was nobody making a living off fighting. <laughs> um. Oh, my dad's like 
team get a real job like that's uh but he's a, yeah my parents have been like pretty cool the whole time my mom my mom um has been like very supportive in in like her own her own way um the entire time but yeah like that was kind of the deal she'll never give me give a uh, stick about fighting if i don't uh if i don't draw on myself so that's like that's just the that's just like the deal we made at like 18 years old i don't i don't get tattoos and and um she lets me do my thing with my fight career so it's paid off uh yeah it's paid off like pretty well for her but yeah my team my yeah my dad's just like funny like obviously your your, your parents like always support you um hey yeah, he's just like funny like the first so I remember the first time I won, uh, like King of the Ring, and it's like three fights in one night, and I like finished all of the fights, like knocked all these guys out, and then I went back home with my big check, with they had ten thousand dollars on it or something. I had took my big check back down home, and you know my dad's just first thing he says. And I was thinking, man, he's gonna you know pat me on the back for this. First thing he says is, they found three people should enough for you to beat in one night, and I was just like, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's hard to please. Yeah, he's, he's hard to please. He's a, that's a hard man to please. Same thing as like I, I remember, like I won my um, UFC C debut, and after like all the expenses and medicals and yeah. um, you know tax and all of that stuff, I think I had like like shit. I would have had like eight grand in my bank account, and I like I legit thought I was like. I, I thought I was richer than I am now mm. when I had like eight thousand dollars. I remember because um, I just been like dating my wife for like a m- couple of months. Mm. I remember showing her like eight thousand dollars in my bank account and be like, "Check this out." You know what I'm talking about? Like, check, check this. Out. The struggle is the struggle is over, girl. Like, <laughs> with, the, with the eight grand in my bank account, and yeah, yeah. The old man like brings you that back down to yeah, earth like real yeah. quick. He's like, "This is like less than a job at McDonald's," and I was like, "Oh," <laughs> but That's it's a, like yeah. it's it's uh, fair enough. Like not all not all motivation has to come with you know bells and whistles and yeah. smiles and stuff like that. It's like whatever whatever gets you motivated and gets you motivated. Those and if you the, can't take yeah. if you Go can't ahead. take people like that giving you like a little bit of stick. Yeah. Um, you're in for a very tough road <laughs> choosing <laughs> choosing this is your career those are the best dads like my dad was like that you know what I mean like he would support you but he would bust your balls every step of the way because it's just fun for him you know what I mean it's just that's what he <laughs> likes <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure yeah. uh, another part of that interview was that um, you you were talking about that you missed waking up sore. You missed pushing your body to the limits. And, you know, most people would think you're crazy for saying that, right? Because most people, they don't even push their body to the limits. They they don't wake up sore. How are you able to put yourself in that state of mind? I don't know. It's just um, it's just knowing that, like, it, it's something I would say, like, early on, you, you take for granted. You take, you take like your health for granted until you no longer have it right like you take you take training for granted um until you get seriously injured and then it like gets taken away from you so it's like and it's the same thing with your fight career like you take like operating at your just your this is like this is the fittest this is the strongest this is the fastest this is the best like you're ever going to be like right now so it's like you enjoy you enjoy that feeling obviously like the training is difficult and stuff like that but when you're once it all works and your body's like actually firing and you feel good and you feel strong and you feel um you know you don't get like anything else you just feel like you're ready to do absolutely anything that that is something that just can't be taken for granted because one day obviously when when your career over like you'll never you'll never get that feeling again and you you hear um i think it was like dc mentioned it uh you hear it from a lot of like olympic athletes because their careers stop 
like instantly you know it's not it's not so much like a martial arts career where like peters out or, or a guy continues to train you can obviously train like gi jiu-jitsu even like long into retirement like olympic if you're a an olympic cyclist or an olympic swimmer like you you live in that pool you train three times a day seven days a week whatever it is and then the olympics event finishes you retire that just finishes you know that that training like finishes and you just yeah you don't miss it till it's gone and so it's like uh i feel like it's a privileged position where you're you've been doing it long enough that you can now just appreciate everything so every day that i'm sore every day that i'm tired every day that i push my body to the absolute limits like i i appreciate it and that's yeah I can see why now that I say it, I can see why it's like a pretty ridiculous thing or 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 a difficult or a difficult thing for for people to understand. For you, the last couple of years, man, have been the wildest wildest ride, man. Just the circumstances, just the fights, and and you fought a lot of the guys, the top guys, you know, former champions, lightweights in their prime. Was was that a prime Dan Hooker we were witnessing against them, or are you entering your prime with the wars past you? Yeah, it's it's, it's funny, and then it's another it's another difficult concept for people to understand. It's like, and like I think I've said it before, and it's just you can't. But I don't take back any of the things that happen or the decisions that have been made because I wouldn't have like reached the level of maturity that I. That I have now, like I wouldn't be the fighter um, that I am right now, and I wouldn't be the fighter going forward. Like he, I've, I'd say the Dan Hooker that was like on his tear and and everything was going good um, pre-COVID. Let's just say pre-COVID life. Like that Dan Hooker, um, like he was on fire, but he was still a. Uh, like yeah, too too like still reckless. You know what I mean? Like obviously, I would have done like a lot better in those fights had COVID situation and fighting out of New Zealand not been um, the situation. But I wouldn't be the fight I am today without those struggles. And I feel like um, I feel like I've made like a lot of changes behind the scenes and a lot of changes. In my like, just my mentality and just maturing as a, as a person overall. So not even um, not even in like pure martial arts, but just uh, like myself. I feel like I'm a more improved version of myself than than that, you know. And it, it's because people. I always feel like, um, and I try not to do it because I always feel like. People are always looking for a reason to jump, like back on the bandwagon. People are always like, people are always like looking for, like they tune into an interview and they like sit down and you get asked a question like that. And it's like, you get asked a question. I know like you're not, this is not <laughs> what you're doing, but they ask you a question like that and they're like, whoa, why, what have you, what's the thing you've changed that I, that I should, get on the bandwagon and think that you're going to be world champion again. And it's just like confidence isn't so like true confidence. I'm talking about true confidence. It's not like that. You know what I mean? If I was saying, Oh, oh, oh well, I, now I sleep in a, a hyperbolic chamber and I uh, take an ice bath every morning before I eat my breakfast. And then every night before, you know, it's just like, Everything, like everything, everything's gotten better. And there are that group of people um, that have supported me the whole time and believed in me the whole time and, and kind of take everything that was happening with a grain of salt and kind of knew um, what it was all along. And it's kind of like the, the next bit is, the next chapter of my career is, is like truly for truly for those people. It's not for the bandwagon people it's for the people that have had me um yes yeah, it's, it's for the people that that have like represented the entire time or, or had my back the whole time and supported the whole time like this next chapter in my career is definitely um geared towards them and i just feel like from like how i've been performing in the gym um 
yeah, I, I feel like I'm I'm just coming into my I'm just coming into my prime. I'm just coming into uh, everything's just coming together. Everything's coming together. Well, one noticeable change is you know Eugene and the team at AP Management, you know, taking over like the business side of things, right? How has that you know benefited you as an athlete? Yeah, I can obviously um, like just push um, all of that to like a lot of the stuff. Like I knew was a dumb decision at the time as well, but just being a fighter and being full headed, um, yeah, you just kind of you make the wrong decisions. You you base um, your decisions off of emotion, and you can ask you can ask any successful businessman in walking the face of the earth. Like you don't you don't make smart decisions basing them off emotions. But it's it's um it's that as uh as a whole just putting people in the right places that I trust, just truly doubling down on my team. And it's, it's stepping back from a lot of the other stuff um, as a whole, like a lot of this other, other um, background noise that was going on outside of the octagon. It's kind of stepping away from that as a whole and just um, enjoying this time, enjoying just being a fighter and being a dad and, and, just uh, a simple life, enjoying enjoying the simple life while uh, while um, yeah, while I can while I can make the most of it. Definitely, and um, a guy that has another guy who has been a big part of you know your your development, your your training camps is BJ Bland, and he recently decided to to move on. You know what kind of impact has he had you know over the years, and and not just just to you, you know the gym. Oh, massive, massive. It's been a, um, yeah, like having having guys like that because, yeah, like Eugene Sumter, I think a lot of people that um, like follow me would have seen that video kind of pop up on Instagram and I feel like Eugene kind of found the words to, to like truly describe that. But yeah, it kind of it is what it is. Like this guy has been just kicking the shit out of me for years in the gym. You know what I mean? <laughs> this guy's been riding me and pushing me. And like, hands down, I said, you know, I wouldn't be the fighter I am today with him and, and with other guys like him. And it, it pure, it truly is time and place opportunity and stuff like this in these games. Like there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, tipping points in a, in a mixed martial arts career. It's really not, you know, a safe as houses situation. There's a lot of tipping points there. My direction of my career or fights that are almost lost, but I won and then went on to a bigger opportunity. Like they can very easily go the other way. And then that door closes straight away and you have to start again and rebuild. So it's just, yeah. Yeah. Another, um, Another lesson to to remind you to to be grateful of what you have. UFC two eighty one man four four of the boys from CKB are fighting on the show. You know a bunch of guys are flying over together. You didn't you didn't have that in your last five fights. You're basically solo dolo right with a uh, you know a couple of coaches maybe even just one coach. You know how will it be just to have the boys the coaching staff that that environment. You know what I mean? During the weeks leading up, um, yeah, it's like already been it's already been crazy. Like time is the time for this camp has just been, been absolutely flying past. I've been enjoying, um, man, we've been pushing it to the absolute limits. But yeah, having having all of our coaches in the building, getting to work with these guys one on one, just being able to train like completely uninterrupted and having the right people around it's just a it's just a small circle of very trustworthy people and it's um yeah we just carry that over to the states like i'm i'm just looking forward to it i can't wait it's been um it's been long so long and it's just yeah we missed out on it so many times like we you know when we're all together the team does the team does so much better it's just um, how our team how our team operates, and, and it's from the outside looking in, you can see it. It's a team that really goes to 
really goes to bat for each other. It's not a team that, um, yeah, it's not like a team of individuals. Everyone, everyone truly goes out there and, and shows out for each other. How big of a prankster is Eugene? Because, you know, in the last fight week, I remember he was just trying to get people. Is he is he like that all the time? Uh, I think it's like anything. We, uh, once it's once it's kind of fight week, it's all the hard work's done. Um, yeah, it's like really time where we can have a bit of fun. I feel like everyone on the team is a little bit of a prankster side of them. It is um, like he tries to f- nail it down and have us like focus as much as he can, but it's um. It is difficult. It is difficult because if you think about it, it's like a room of what, like 40, 50 friends. Like we're like 50 mates. Like we're obviously like trained, but there's really no, like in our team, there's no one that actually butt heads with each other. There's like absolutely like, well, I, I train with him or he trains on the other side of the room and I train. Like there's actually no one like that in our team. Um, so yeah, obviously you has to keep it pretty serious, like most of the time, because it's a, it's a group of like 50 people that don't operate well in like normal situations. Like we don't like not a single one of us did well at school, not a single one of us like has the attention span like has great attention spans, you know what I mean? So if he, if he walked in the gym and he was mucking around, like it's going to turn into a, um, it's going to turn into a zoo like pretty quick. So he has to, you know, keep it serious. But I guess like fight week, work's done. We kind of just have the fight left, which you all kind of enjoy. Like that's when he can let his head down a bit. Yeah, that's great. That's great, man. Of course. Um, your opponent, man, at UFC 281, Claudio Pérez. He he said in an interview that he specifically asked for you after his last fight against Clay Guido, right? Some fighters they might take offense to that. How do you feel about being targeted by him? Um, no, like that's obvious. That's like what he needs to do to to move his his way um, into the rankings. Fight someone in that ten to fifteen space. You know, I'm a fighter that's been up there and and been in with a lot of the top guys in the division so it's a it's a i can definitely understand the opportunity that he's looking to take like from from not that i look or take too much notice or anything like that but uh you know he seems to be like a pretty respectful kid so yeah if we we just go we just go on old school we just go on handshake um may the better man win that's that's uh that's old school. Handshake, fist fight, handshake. That's the system. Handshake, fist fight, beer. That's how. <laughs> that's the old system. McGregor, he's been posting this training video. I'm pretty sure you've been seeing it, the sparring video. And and I was talking with uh, Rafael Fiziev, and he said that Connor's basically training with beginners, and and that has affected his recent performances. Have you seen the footage? And and what do you see? Is Connor trolling us? Is that what he's doing? And just just doing his thing? Um, yeah, I don't know what, um, <laughs> I don't know, I don't, um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that. Like, I know, I, I kind of understand how his team um, operates and they're kind of the same thing to say that they he, he only fights. Like, I train with beginners sometimes or I train of like novices that is the um that's the circle of life with mixed martial arts to so to just say um obviously he goes like a little harder than I would work <laughs> <laughs> some of the amateurs of the gym but yeah I heard I heard he's like that in the gym I heard he's just game and and he's he's yeah treats it takes takes his sparring quite seriously but yeah, he he's focused on his movie career for now, like Roadhouse, Patrick Swayze. That's a great film. It you is, know what I mean? Is, that's is. a that's a great film. If if I could act, sing, or dance, I wouldn't be um, stepping in a cage. You can get <laughs> <laughs> you get no, by like with he, your looks. Yeah, he's he's focusing um, he's focusing on that for for the next time being. So yeah, like. 
I'm going to wait till Roadhouse comes out and then wherever the chips fall, they shall fall. Yeah, man. Everybody's in the sweepstakes, you know. Justin Gaethje's out there saying that he's going to fight McGregor next, but at the, in reality, everybody's in the sweepstakes. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know how these guys are trying to get a fight with McGregor by constantly disrespecting him or calling him names or bringing up his family life or stuff like that. Because, yeah, like, you obviously need to understand that he knows that, like, whoever he fights, win or lose, is going to be um, financially secure for the rest of his days after that. So why would he, why would he, you know, want to reward, essentially, like, reward someone who's who's saying that he's not a good family man or, or not, you know, or, or just constantly berating him and disrespecting him. It doesn't make much sense to me when some of these guys attack him or, or, or question him like that, especially not at a time. Like, we all know that he's not, um, like, he's, he's filming a movie and he's not going to compete for the next six months, eight months, 10 months, 12 months, potentially. So it's, yeah, like, are they doing it for attention, building their brand? Maybe, like, he, he's a big, he's a, still the biggest name, regardless of whether he competes or not. Like, he's still the biggest name in the sport. Um, so obviously, attaching your name to his name is the, um, yeah, it's like a good business decision. But in terms of actually getting the fight, I don't think that these guys are thinking it that well through. Yeah, I never thought of it that way. You're you're right. Attacking him and he holds all the marbles. Like you you you're essentially asking him for something. Right? Like you you're essentially essentially these guys are going pick me, pick me. You know who and and saying pick me, pick me. You Effing like you know what I mean, like, steroid abuser, a, like a, yeah, accusing yeah, him of using you steroids, know. you know, like stuff like that, right? Like he he decides, like he makes a decision. So I I can't I can't understand. He's gonna be like, oh yeah, oh, ooh, yeah. You think you think he's um, so easy to manipulate that you're gonna call him a steroid? You're gonna call him names, and he's going to he's going to make. He's going to make a bad business decision or a bad decision in his fight career based off you calling him names. If there's a, a, any fighter in the world that I feel like can handle criticism, it has to be like Conor McGregor, who can handle the criticism and continue to, to evolve or continue to move forward in the sport. It has to be Conor McGregor. So, yeah, it just doesn't... Hey, if they if they get the fight and it works, then um, more power to them. But I can't um, I can't fathom the logic. That's all. Last question: Nate Diaz after he beat Tony Ferguson, you know we were on the show, the All Star MMA Live show. Go check it out. Nate Diaz, you said Nate Diaz is gonna fight Floyd Mayweather, and now they're in talks. Like I guess. Nate Diaz versus Floyd Mayweather under the Ryzen banner. You even talked about right. You even said Ryzen as well. Like that's a possibility. How crazy is that? That you stated pretty much what's gonna possibly happen with Nate Diaz. Um, like that's that makes him the most money. That makes Floyd the most money. Um, it makes the most sense for both of them. So it's just like like obviously Ryzen to facilitate that sort of fight. They they obviously have um, a good established relationship with Floyd Mayweather. Nate Diaz is a free agent. Like it's just it comes down to probability. It's it's the chances of something happening. And like from the when that first like all fell into place, like that's that makes the mo that makes everyone the most money. That makes Ryzen the most money. That makes 
Floyd Mayweather the most money and that makes Nate Diaz the most money. Every, in, in any good business relationship, everybody has to win. If if someone's losing out, then it's not a, a good business relationship. Like in this relationship or in that particular scenario, everybody wins. Everybody walks away with a smile. And that's, um, yeah, that's how good business is done. November 12th, UFC 281, New York City, Madison Square Garden. If you want to know more about the event, if you want to know more about Dan Hooker, go download the All-Star app in the description. Dan, appreciate the time. And uh, I think we'll be seeing you one more time before uh, you head off to New York. Hopefully. You will.